Hi everybody, Sean Holsinger here from HolsingerSplyShop.com. This pattern is a sulfur spinner pattern. Uh, you can tie any of the spinner patterns this same style, it's just I'm tying it in the sulfur color. Um, this is a really productive pattern for us during the sulfur hatch, it works real well. I actually fished it out in Colorado last fall during a pink Cahill hatch and uh, used it instead of the pink Cahill because you know we don't have them here we just have we have sulfurs and, and it represented the same kind of thing and uh, did real well caught a lot of fish on it I uh, hope you enjoy this pattern remember if you like what you see you like my videos subscribe to my youtube channel so you can constantly be updated with new videos and uh, we carry the materials for this fly on our website wholesingersflyshop.com okay the fly I'm tying for you here now is my sulfur spinner fly I'm just going to start out with some brown thread Tying this on a size 16, 1170 Daiichi dry fly hook. Uh, the spinner fly, the spinner, is the very last life cycle of a mayfly. And uh, what it is, is the, the nymph hatches, swims to the surface as an emerger. Um, goes up in the tree, well, hatches as a done, flies up in the tree, does its thing, molts again comes down lays its eggs on the water and then after it's done laying its eggs on the water then it lays down on the water and it dies and it's called a spinner okay this we're going to tie in a fly to imitate this the first thing I'm going to tie on here is the tail I'm going to use just regular white antron yarn okay and I'm just going to put a little bit of a tail out here you don't want your tail real long shorten that up just a hair Okay, you, this is a great, great pattern. Um, I actually, when the sulfur fly, when the sulfur hatch is really on, I'll actually tie one of these on with my dry fly, see which one's working. I'll tie two dries, well, this, the the done and the spinner on at the same time, just till I find out which one they're hitting more, and then I'll fish that one. Uh, this is a great pattern. Actually, if you watch my video where we went to the Uncompagra River out in Colorado, there was a pink Cahill hatch, and this matched the hatch really well. I ended up catching a lot of fish on this, this fly right here that I'm tying. The next thing I'm going to put on is the ribbing. Okay, for the ribbing, I'm using um, embroidery thread again. The embroidery thread is made up of six strands. I'm going to take one strand out of those six, and that's going to be my ribbing for this fly. This is like a like a bronze color, a uh, dark brownish color, and it'll go good against the yellow. You don't want anything real powerful on this, just something to set it off a little bit different. I'm going to wrap that down. You have to be careful because it is kind of, uh, it's thin, so it will break easy. You don't want to pull too hard on that. Then I'm going to put on some super fine sulfur orange dubbing. And not a lot here. You want to keep your bodies thin. So I'm just going to put on a little bit of super fine dubbing here. I'm going to take it up about two thirds of the way. Sulfur hatch is one of my favorite hatches of the year to fish. It's more or less the signal of the beginning of fly fishing season around our parts when it starts to get real good uh, you always look forward to the sulfur hatch summer's coming I need just a little bit more on here okay now like I said I want to stop about two-thirds of the way up here and I don't want to get my body too thick so that's pretty good right there Take some of this off. I always say the biggest mistake you can make is making your body too thick. Okay, now I'm going to take my ribbing and rib this fly. Just make it nice and even up there. About four wraps ought to get it. I'm going to tie off my tie off my ribbing piece here okay now 
cut that off. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come back to my Antron yarn again. And I'm going to set this on top of the hook here. Okay. What I'm going to do is I'm going to figure eight this onto the hook. So I'm going to wrap it loose there, tie it a little bit tighter then. I'm just going to take and make a figure eight to secure this to the top of the hook. wrap or two behind it and a wrap or two in front of it and what you want is like a cross pattern there you you want the antron to lay flat across it like its wings laying down on the water I'm going to leave this long for just a second next thing I'm going to come back to is some uh, cinnamon caddis dubbing just a it's a darker it's a, a really really light brown color for my sulfur here to make the front end of the sulfur and again, not that much. Just want to give it the color. So I'm just going to dub this on my string here. And then I'm going to come in here and same thing as tying this down. I'm going to figure eight over this. And I'm just going to make sure I get the whole front end of this covered. So it's all nice and uniform up there. Yeah, don't like that. Thin that out just a little bit here. This is a pretty simple fly to tie and a very very effective fly okay and then just want to come up front of the hook here wrap it off and then we're just gonna pull, pull these back out of the way so we can make a little head here and knot it off with my whip finisher boy am I struggling with my whip finisher today whip finish this off okay then we're gonna come back in and we're gonna cut our wings to length okay get them centered on the top like that and then just cut them to a nice even length. You want them the same length on both sides. You don't want them real long. Just imagine what that wet fly would, I mean that fly is going to look like laying on the water. You don't want real long feathers and then you want to just spread them out a little bit make it look like wet wings there spread out like that. Really simple fly. Um, really simple dry fly to fish. Just use some uh, the antrum will float real well, but you're going to need a little bit of floating. But really nice, easy fly to tie.